Welcome to Duran's Designs. In this video, we'll be making a 3D model from a photograph. The photograph will be this Cocker Spaniel that I found on the internet. I'll give you a link in the description below where you can follow along with the same photo if you like. Before we get started, I would just ask if you like these videos that you hit like and subscribe down below. And leave a comment and let me know that you did. It really helps out this channel and it helps me to keep bringing you new videos every week. So to, to get started, we'll just open up a spire, start a new document with the dimensions of 10 by 10 by 1.5. And we'll go and we'll open up the image of the Cocker Spaniel that we downloaded from the internet. And we'll just size it to wherever we want it. And once we've done that, we'll just go up and start a new layer and we'll name it profile. And we'll use that for the body of the dog to create the component. So we're just going to go around the dog on the whole outside of the body and head. But before we do that, you just click on the image and we'll go to right click bitmap properties and we'll bring it down to about 15% opacity so that we can see what we're doing. So then we'll just start making our lines with the line create tool. And you just kind of have to play this one by ear. It's a, it's a bit of a tough one with all the hair sticking out. You just have to decide where you want to set the lines. So let's quickly zoom through this. So just a reminder, you can use your mouse middle scroll wheel. If you hold it down, you can move the document over. And if you scroll up and down, you can zoom in and out of the document, which is very useful when you're creating the vector lines. So once you complete that line all the way through and it connects, you're going to always want to make sure that the lines are closed in a continuous loop. And you'll just go and close that out and click on your vector. And you'll see that it's all lit up so you know it's good. So you're going to want to uh, use your keyboard, hit the N once that's lit up, which is the node editor. And each one of those little dots is a node that you can adjust your line up or down, side to side, using your keyboard or your mouse. But I find the keyboard is the easiest way to do that. Once you've clicked on the node and it's turned red, you can edit it either with your arrow keys on your keyboard, moving back and forth, up and down, or you can use your mouse if you're just making a quick edit. So once you got the lines to where you want them, you'll just hit the N on the keyboard again, and that'll take you back to the normal line. And once you've done that, we're going to go up to the dual view mode and we'll start making the component for the profile. So make sure that the line is highlighted, checked, and we're going to use the dome tool and we will use 90 degree angle and we'll scale to exact height. And then you'll just move the height to where you want it. It's kind of play it by ear. You don't want to go too high or you might go past your material as you start layering the different components up. And once you got the shape that you want, you hit apply, you always have to hit apply and then close. Okay. So now we're going to uncheck the component we just made. 
So we can see the image. We're going to make sure the image is clicked and we're going to go up and create our skin. So you just make a component from a bitmap and that shows you that you have uh, the skin on there, which is a nice feature, but we have to adjust it. So you make sure you click on that component and go up to the component properties. And we're going to bring down the shape height as much as we can. We want to be able to see the details, but not have it stick up too high or be too detailed or it will take forever to carve. So you just got to play around with that until you get the look that you're going for. I find that a fairly small shape height and a zero base height is usually the way to go when it comes to creating the component for the skin. Once you're happy with that, you just close it out and we can also go and smooth it if it needs it. So you hit the smooth component tool and you're just going to move the slider till you get it where it looks good. You don't want to go too high and you bake that and close it out. Okay, so once you've done that, we are gonna zoom in and we're gonna start making some more vectors. So we'll do a circle for the eyes. We'll do this raised part above the eye, the brow and the nose and mouth and all that. So we'll just start with a circle for the left eye and we will go from there. And I'll just zoom through this whole process as you've seen this in many of my other videos before, so we won't waste time with this, but I'll still show it just at a sped up pace.
Okay, now that we got all the shapes, or most of the shapes completed, we're going to select all the components together, and we are going to group them together. Right click, group, and then we're going to duplicate that by right clicking and hitting duplicate. And then we will work on the duplicated profile. So we'll go up to the sculpting tool, just hit OK for baking. Okay, so we're gonna smooth out all these components, make them look more like one piece. Before we do that, we'll hit number six, and that'll be able to move our model around. You can also hold the Alt key on your keyboard. So we wanna preserve transparency off for this one. And we'll go to number one, or smoothing. Okay, so we'll just start smoothing everything out. You want to set your strength and your smoothness. You just have to play around with it. You can always hit discard if you don't like what you have done, or you can edit and undo as long as you haven't clicked the keep button. So you're just going to go around all the rough edges, smoothing out, changing your brush diameter, the strength, the smoothness. You're just going to go through your whole model until you get it the way you want. If you click the preserve transparency, then it will not go into the edge of the model. But uh, in our case, we have some issues with the, the edge of the model. So we will uncheck that feature but then you're going to have to go in and lower it the model down. I'll show you how to do that because you'll see that smoothing outside the model otherwise. So when you're happy with what you have so far, you can hit keep, then you hit okay. And then we will go back into our dual mode. And I'll check the skin back on and we can see where we're at so far, how it looks with our skin added. It's starting to look a little better now. It can take a, a while to get exactly what you want. You just have to keep working at it until you get the model to look the way you want. And we will go in and smooth out the edges of the model that we did not create, the hair on the top. We'll use our sculpting brush to smooth that out. Okay, so now I'm going to go in and I'm going to adjust the properties of my skin component again. I think we got a little bit too much detail still. So we will just bring that down. Shape height. That's maybe a little bit too much. So you just got to fiddle with that until you get a shape height that you're happy with. We can come back to that later as we do more sculpting. So now we'll just click on the profile again and we'll go back into sculpting and we'll just refine our, our sculpture a little bit more. So then we'll go back into our skin and see how we're looking. Not too bad. Like I said, it's a process. Let's go back and forth. Keep adding shapes, keep adding sculpting. So now we'll go back into the sculpting tool, clicking on the profile, and we will start to add some eyelids. We'll use the number three add material tool. You got to adjust your strength, the smoothness, and the size of your brush. 
And this just takes trial and error. You're going to take your time with this until you get it the way you want. You're just adding material around the eye. You might have to erase it. You might have to redo it. And then after you get the material added, you're going to smooth it out and maybe smudge it to get it to look the way you want. Okay, so now you're going to want to go in and edit your component skin again. And you just want to get the height of the skin the way you want it. Get maybe a little more detail in there. Raise up the shape height a little bit. You can go in and smooth the skin component on its own as well. Or you can combine it with your model. And... Uh, You can, you can adjust it in many different ways. And now we're going to turn off our skin again, go back to our model and we'll do a little bit more adjusting. So if ever we're not happy with what we've done, we can just go down and hit the discard. And it'll say all changes will be lost, but it's okay. And we can just start over till we get it the way we want it. Okay, so once we're happy with that, we'll hit keep and we'll take a look at what we've done so far. It's a slow process, but we're getting there. You always have to go back to your skin and see how it's going to look with your skin. And then you're getting an idea how our finished model is going to look. It's starting to look pretty good. It's going to take a bit more refining though. All right, now we want to go in and we want to add a few more components. So we're going to have to create some more vectors. So we'll go back into our 2D drawing view and we'll go and create a new layer for the ears. We'll have them sticking out a little bit. So we'll go back to our drawing tab and we'll create a line and we'll just go around the shape of the ears and let's do the same process we did for the rest of the body parts.
So we'll go in and uncheck the skin again, and we're going to combine these new components together with the old profile so that we can sculpt it all together as one. And we'll select the new combined profile and we'll start sculpting. And we'll smooth those ears into the rest of the model. So everything's starting to come together now. So we're going to go in now to the skin and we're going to smooth out all those hairs and everything on the top of the model above the dog's head. So we're going to go in and check the skin level and we will duplicate it. And then we will uncheck the original and just work on the copy and we will sculpt that and let's just get rid of all that hair around there. We're going to hit the lower and smoothing, adjust the strength and the smoothness. And we're just going to work at that. Be careful not to get too close to the actual model of the dog. And we're just going to try to remove any of the high points. Might be some over here. Just so we have a nice flat edge around the profile of the dog. Once you're happy with that, you can just hit keep and okay. And there's what you got. That looks pretty good, I think. So now we'll just do some last fine detailing on the smoothing. I'm not really totally happy with the eyes. So we will go back in and sculpt that. But before we do that, we will combine the skin copy that we just made with our original profile group. Once you're happy with the, your final smoothing, you can look at your model. And I'm okay with that. I think that looks pretty good. Now you can obviously adjust more details if you like, depending on your model and your picture that you're working with. But I'm going to go with that. I think that looks pretty good to my liking. So when you're satisfied with your model, you can go to the tooling section and you can set up your 3D tool path. I use a 1 8 ball nose. You might have to get another one on there of a smaller diameter in order to get some of the fine details, but this is where I always start. And you can pick whatever size you want for that. We'll go with a one millimeter tapered ball nose for our second carve 
for the fine details. And there you have it. You got your finished model. Now you can go in to your document size and you can adjust that so you don't have that image bump where the image was. You can make it the size of your document. It's easy enough to do. And then you can export that to a 3D clip art or an STL file. And you can save it for a component for different projects. So as always, if you like this video, please hit like and subscribe and hit the notification button and you'll be notified each time I have a new video. I upload at least once or twice a week. And let me know in the comments if you have any requests for videos or tutorials or just want to let me know that you subscribed. I'd appreciate it. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.